Hey, I'm Jonathan. Welcome. Here's the strange story of how this turned into this. As every great story, it starts and ends with pies. In 1871, William Frisbee, not a joke, started a pie company. And students around the area of Bridgeport, Connecticut, apparently liked pie. And when they were done with the pies, they used to throw the lid around while yelling Frisbee. As you do, this throwing of different lids went on for a while until 1948, when this guy, Walter, invented the Frisbee. But at the time, it was called the Flying Saucer. Why Flying Saucer was due to a pilot named Kenneth Albert Arnold, who in 1947, one year earlier, said, Guys, I saw nine unusual objects flying in the sky. Like a pie plate cut in half with sort of a convex triangle in the rear or saucer-like. We're gonna go with Flying Saucer. And this got a lot of attention. So afterwards, many, many people started reporting that they had seen strange things in the skies, flying saucers all over the place. Then a company went, smells like monies, and the flying saucer was born. But it had a flaw, thought Ed Hedrick, or Steady Ed at wham -O. This flying toy, now renamed as Pluto Platter, was mainly marketed to kids. And Ed thought it was time for Pluto to grow up. So in 1967, he filed a patent for the modern Frisbee. By this time, the pie, the Frisbee Pie Company had shut down. Put a pin in that though. You know, said Ed and his buddy George. This Frisbee thing will pair nicely with golf, right? I'll invent a basket as well. Let's call it this golf. Who actually invented this golf is hard to answer, but Ed is seen as the father of this golf. And as a father, you need patience and a governing body. One of them, also started by Ed, is the Professional Disc Golf Association. Let's do a lot of different things, they said. And they do. And one thing is about the numbers. And I'll get back to the numbers in a little bit. Another thing they do is the approval of new disc molds. Because even though the Frisbee was fun and good and stuff and all of that, it needed some tweaking to make it go further, for example. So in 1983, Dave Dunapace of Innova made the Eagle, a disc that was solely created for disc golf. Here it is. There's even more good stuff to be done to the Frisbee or the disc, said Latitude 64 and other companies like Dynamic Discs and Westside Discs. I think that's all of them. <laughs> and as the sport has evolved, now you have putters, mid-ranges, fairway drivers, distance drivers, different plastics, different weights to alter the flight and feel of a disc so you will have a better time on the course. You will have a good time with just the one disc, but maybe you want or need a couple of them if you were to enter a tournament. And to enter many of them, you need a number, the PGGA number, meaning you're all right. And here we find our friend Ed again. Numero uno. But he's not alone. As of this video, the total is this many people and counting. This can be seen as a receipt of the growth of disc golf, even though it's, it's just a snapshot. The sport has grown a lot the last couple of years. A lot of new people are trying out the sport, myself included. But whether or not you're new to the sport, I'm hoping that you enjoyed this video of the history of disc golf. And if you didn't, I'm sorry. But I, I hope you like pie then. Because a man by the name of Dan O'Connor, this is Dan. Hi Dan, a disc golfer, relaunched the Frisbee, the, the Pie Frisbee Company in 2016 using the same original recipe from 1871. So if you didn't enjoy this video, if you did, you can eat that pie. Eat Dan's pie. Not a sponsor. Goodbye.